vein thrombosis and also uh, complications related to yeah, circulating vasoactive substances. So I'm going to talk about that and a method that I have worked on it for more than a year. So foam wash out sclerotherapy, what I named it, uh, it's geared toward reducing short and long term uh, complications of foam sclerotherapy. Traditionally in medicine, we are thinking we inject a medicine in the body uh, to gain certain effects on target cells, organs, or you know, invading organisms to the body. Medication then is eliminated through different pathways uh, or uh, excretion routes. Always side effects are have been a problem, including in the foam sclerotherapy. Now, in the case of using foam, the, we have the luxury of not leaving foam there and just hit the uh, desired uh, target, which is the varicose vein, and not and removing uh, most or all of the foam and avoid side effects. It's not applicable to every varicose vein, but to some instances we can do it, which I'll explain. Let's look at this uh, simply how we inject now uh, do for short sap in Spain, for example, which is the simplest case. We'll usually, we insert a catheter or needle in the proximal part of short sap in Spain, where we, uh, and the leg is slightly elevated. We compress the proximal part of short sap in Spain and inject the foam. Foam spreads into short saphenous vein, but it can spread, and it does spread through perforators and connections to gastroc veins and can get to the deep system and form a needles for uh, uh, a thrombus, which can expand and cause DVT, plus circulating vasoactive uh, you know, substances, which cause you know, migraine and neurologic uh, complications. They have been reported a lot. And Dr. Frolini was talking about endothelins today. Now, with foam wash, I will inject this, the, the medicine the same way. I, I have preferred to inject again in the proximal part. While you inject, you compress the, prox the uh, popliteal junction, but actively we apply negative pressure at a distance, four, five, six inches below there. We, we have inserted another angiocat, and we are, at the same time injecting foam, we start with drawing foam from the other end. This way, actually, when we are uh, in uh, this way of injection, we displace the blood faster. The foam displaces the blood and comes in contact better, I think, than with regular sclerotherapy. And Let's look at the simple video. Uh, you know, uh, of when I did one short staff in this way. Again, identifying, I placed an angiocat in the proximal part of short staff in Spain, just uh, one or two inch below popliteal junction. Another catheter is halfway in the cap in the short staff in Spain. So, about 60 cl of, of, of foam, uh, citratical one and a half percent, I'm injecting here. Probe is uh, compressing the popliteal junction, the same way that you do regular sclerotherapy. And you don't need to elevate with this technique the leg too much, just 10 degrees is good enough. So as we're injecting the foam, and my assistant is pulling out the foam from a more distal portion. So foam did hit the, exactly the target and a lot of it, at least 90% of it, is out in the second syringe. I'll explain more the benefits of this, what it could be. So, there are many numerous papers I've written about, uh, have been written, uh, and will come more about side effects of foam sclerotherapy. How we did this uh, treatment, uh, this method, I uh, I used a randomized clinical trial. We had, uh, of the patients that participated, 374 complicated six months follow-up. And for these patients, I treated 512 varicose veins, including great saphenous, short saphenous, and anterolateral tributary varicose veins with this method. So two groups. The top one is regular foam sclerotherapy, about uh, 261 
and for more sclerotherapy uh, 281, and you can see the breakdown of which veins were done. Uh, I want to focus a lot on short half in Spain because that's the easiest way for to start with, you know, to do form sclerotherapy. Uh, other veins are a little more complex. And follow up, we uh, had an interview with the patient in 24 hours of just a form. In two weeks, two months, and six months, we had re-exam and ultrasound evaluation. The complete uh, closure and lack of reflux uh, in the treated vein was very similar, better than 90% for all of them in six months. Now, complication rates. This is where the difference was. And uh, if you look at, you know, I distributed, the, these are the ones I looked at, I'm sure there are other complications. Uh, vision disturbances, you can see in the regular form sclerotherapy, the top group, uh, we have five, and for short segment, three and a half percent, while we had zero for the same types of being treated in the form of arthritis sclerotherapy, neurologic symptoms. We just had one, one patient who had with greater sadness and had upper limb, and, uh, you know, like transient numbness of the upper extremity part of it, which uh, you know uh, resolved. Migraine headaches uh, were. 7% for great staph in Spain and about 3.5 for uh, 3 to 3.5 for short and anterolateral tributary, while it was uh, just less than 1% for great staph and 0 for short staph in Spain, and uh, we had 2.5% for anterolateral. Deep vein thrombosis, uh, we just had one case in the greater staph in Spain at the saphenofemoral junction. There was extension of thrombus, not full closure. Uh, and we had one in the, for the short saphenous Spain for regular therapy at popliteal level. We had zero for the foam wash. Superficial phlebitis, which was a complication, a little delayed usually we have uh, after a foam therapy of a large superficial varicose veins, which normally around the two months follow up, but that's where it was noted. It's around seven to 10% for regular foam therapy, and under 1% is for foam wash. So in conclusion, a foam washout sclerotherapy, when applicable, like I said, there's a lot of technical things I have to wrap this up in a few minutes, that's why I, I can answer more questions later. And when it's applicable, which I say again, the best vein is short staph in this vein, is superior to regular foam sclerotherapy by lowering complication rates. We have the ability with this technique to direct the foam exactly to the segment of the vein we want and avoid the foam going into veins that we don't want to go. And uh, when we apply a positive and negative pressure and we're giving this direction to the foam, we're displacing the blood faster uh, by that injected foam and this foam is coming in better contact and there's less chance of mixing with blood. So duration, because uh, questions was brought to me before this, duration is in your control. If you know you're getting, uh, you have learned the technique well, you can choose different size syringes. You can put five cc foam and five, try to get five cc out. You can use a 10 cc syringe, you can use 20 cc syringe. And depends on, on the size of the vein and where you're treating. So in practice again, it looks simple, but it's not that simple. Just start please with short saphenous, which is a straight vein. It's not applicable to small zigzag vein, this technique. And uh, long segments you can treat. You can treat long saphenous vein, but then it's uh, because you cannot have the distance between the two catheters too long, so you have to put multiple angiocats uh, before you start. And let's say from top you inject in A point, withdraw from B, then inject in B, and then withdraw from C, and, and so on, and you can do longer segments. I have put up to five uh, angiocats, you know, and, and done the technique that way. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have about a minute for some questions, if there's anybody who has something to ask. Please come up to the microphone, and if you have any disclosures, please tell us those disclosures as you, uh, prior to your question. Yes, I, I have no disclosures. How was your staining with uh, this compared to uh, just straight foam sclerotherapy? You mean uh, hyperpigmentation? Yes. 